Sir, I could not raise the dead at a certain point in my walk with God until I saw it. Let me tell you when I became fierce in my life, when I attended about three to four funerals, I wept like a child. Especially when my grandmother died, I saw that woman, period. I stood, I, I remember, nobody knew this except my, my mom's elder sister. She started encouraging me. It's what, I, I came from South Africa for that funeral. I was Pastor John then. So when I, she was buried somewhere there, so I, I, there was a little bit of a place to sit near the grave just a stone throw to the grave i sat there i could not walk i wept i wept i everybody was busy serving food you know this after funeral people want to serve food i was like i was i didn't even care about food i began to cry memories of this precious woman how we were younger when we were small and all of those things and I wept. My anger for death rose in a way that I stood up from that tear. I closed my, I just wiped my tears. I said, death, I'm coming for you. Until you bury a loved one, you may never understand this. God until you see your loved one that didn't just want to die she doesn't want to die young people loved one killed jesus is not the one he does not kill he came that you might have life and have it in abundance satan has done this what are we doing to stop it I stood up, I said, you know, I said, no, no, don't mind me crying. I cry a lot. Just that I don't show it often. Tear a lot in my room. I tear like a child. I weep before him always. Sometimes my bed is full of water. You come, you see his tears. I saw you. Forget about this thing you call theology. Whatever, I, I'm dead. I, I, I'm, I'm broken. I don't, I'm a broken man. I'm broken. I'm so broken. I've gone through fires. I want to see the truths of Jesus manifest in the lives of believers. Not just to talk about it. Not just to shout about it. And not experience it. This is where the problem is. I, uh, the, the second time was when I had a friend of mine. His name was Ike, our neighbor. He had kidney issues. He was, at, he was 24. 24, very young man, very intelligent guy. He was our neighbor. He developed kidney failure. I remember, I followed him to the hospital. A few, few days later, they said they can't do anything about it. At his two kidneys have failed and they don't have money for kidney transplant or whatever it is, it was gone. So, um, a few days later, this guy died. Ike, young man, vibrant young man. I saw him many times. He had boy from his, because of the urine that wasn't going out. So he developed all kinds of growths you know boys all over the body and his legs were swollen legs were swollen so i just saw this and when he when i heard it because they, they took him from hospital to the village so i didn't know where he was a few days later i heard he died i didn't believe it so what ike is dead i said no take me in the car i'm going to raise him I've had terrible experiences. It's how boring this can be. 
Jesus came that this young child would leave, that this young man would leave and not die. And he's a believer, he believes in Jesus. So I drove for about two hours to their village. When they saw me coming, they were happy. Now, Pastor John, I mean, you know, because I've always been a man of miracles and all of those. I entered the room. They all were there. I saw the dead body was in a, in a, in a coffin. I went there. I said, Ike, in the name of Jesus, come back to life. He didn't come back. I said, Ike, in Jesus' name, come back, come back. He didn't. I said, Father, your word said. So I quoted that, that in your name we shall raise the dead. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I come back. He didn't come back to life. Touched him. He was stone cold. That was when I knew that dead bodies are cold. Stone cold, stiff. I pushed him. Sons of God, I became ashamed of myself. I didn't know how to come out of the room. People were waiting outside. That the man of God has arrived. I didn't know what to do. I'm telling you my journey. Why and how I got to where I am. The challenges that made me seek for the deeper things of God. You know why our pastors have gone free? We are not holding them responsible within the measures of the promises of God. We don't. And that's why they are relaxed in their palaces, driving private jets, deceiving you with the letters. If they cannot raise the dead, if they cannot heal cancers, if they cannot do what the scripture says, walk away from the churches. Get out. It's not talking letters. Anybody can be trained to teach Bible. Get out. Sounds tough. Yes, get out. Challenge. We Christians should be challenging pastors. Sir, don't tell me scriptures that don't manifest in your church. Let me tell you something. Because at that point in time, I could heal certain sicknesses. But I, I realized that my anointing could not heal or raise the dead. I haven't reached that authority. So I prayed everything the scripture said. I was dead. Now, I left with the consciousness of... It, 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 it wasn't long, no, no longer about raising Ike from the dead. You know what it was about? How do I cover my shame? How do I escape these people? Because I entered with faith. I came out with enough faithlessness. I entered with confidence. And I came out with a zero depleted confidence. I didn't know what to do. I sneaked. I just came out. I said, I said, uh, 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 I started st st stammering. Uh, 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 God, uh, God, God has delayed. So uh, <laughs> I just ran in, in, into the car and I drove out. That night I had heart attack. Mm. I, I, yes, I did. I had nightmares. I did not sleep for almost five nights. I cried. My heart was panting. My heart failed me. My faith failed me. My trust failed me. But I never, I didn't distrust him. I didn't, there was no issues with him. So, and I went into my room. I had locked the door. I didn't see anybody. I went into trembling to say what happened. I saw myself enter into seven days dry fasting and prayer. Lord, I need answers. Until we begin to seek for answers instead of questioning God. Is your word true or not? No, 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 no. Something is missed somewhere. You must get to know what that thing is. For instance, when 
Moses, when, when Peter, pardon me, when Peter was walking on the water by the word of Jesus, suddenly something also happened. He sank. So we need to know what happened in between. Was it mean that does it mean that the power wasn't real? Or wasn't potent enough? Or wasn't enough? That must be something that Peter did that breached something in the realms. And it answers. Lord, I don't want to misrepresent you. I'm not going to be a talker of letters. A preacher of letters. I want the truth to be seen. So I entered seven days dry, praying. Father. This is Pastor John. I'm sharing me now. So that you can know who this man is. My journey. My challenges. The Goliaths I faced. The things I conquered to increase in spiritual realms. When I was praying, the Lord said to me, he came to me in the vision. He said, for you have not received the level of anointing that can cause your voice, your words to travel into the spirit realms where the soul of this man is held. Meniko Parada. He says an authority is needed. He said you must increase in spiritual authority. I said, how Lord? He said consecration, fasting, and prayer. Hey, I come and live a little. My God, I began to fast. I began to consecrate. I began to study the world. I stayed in Revelation. Yes. Three years later. This is three years after Ike was dead. I tried to raise the dead. Immediately, a child died in our hospital. In our church's hospital. It's called ICH. International Christian Hospital. Died instantly. The mother ran to us. I was with Pastor Pierre, Lyndon Moranzo. He's still alive. He's a minister in, in U.S. Dallas, Texas. He was there. He's still alive. He tells the story. This happened right in his front. In fact, he, I, my, my name went all over the U.S. through that, through Pastor Pierre. He told everybody about what he saw. This child died. <laughs> died instantly. When he gone. The mother the doctor said, it's done. The mother ran to us. My child is passed. Please. You know, something in me. You, you remember my story? Oh. Something in me also was provoked again. I said, this time around, I'm ready for it. There was assurance in my spirit that I am ready for this one. Sons of God, when you increase in spiritual authority, your spirit Spirit will witness it. That's that. See, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord witnesses in our hearts that we are the sons of God. That's an assurance in our spirits. When I got there, this was not even, there was no much. Like the first one was, was like too confident. <laughs> you, you know, I was acting like I know it all. And I, and I failed. But this time around, I walked with Pastor Pierre quietly. Why we we're going from the school because our church then has theological school and also has a um, hospital. So from from it's, it's all one one building, but has different sections. So we instead of coming from the school because that's where I schooled and also that's also where I was pastored. So my pastor was the uh, uh, vice chancellor of that school. So we were going. While we were going, immediately I detached from him. We were walking, but my spirit was gone. Hey, I traveled into the realms of something was boiling. That's what, what we call groaning. That I know. I know. Oh, I know. 
No, 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 no. This is not Noga, Mama, Mama. Not Cheka, Mama. No, 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 no. That one was the groaning of my spirit was loaded with burden. Something was burning on my body. Pastor Peter did not know. He didn't see that one. I transfigured. By the time we entered the the hospital room, the mother, the family, everybody was there crying and all of those things. And I looked, and everybody was there. I said, "All of you, oh man, I can, I can, I can be very rude, eh? Very, very. You know why I used the word rude? Because that's the only language you can understand. Because, because sometimes what you call rudeness is not actually being rude; it's being spiritual. But it is misunderstood as rude in our secular world. Because that is exactly what Jesus did." When he got to the place where he raised that child, he asked that all of them be out. But now, an average person will see uh, it as what? Rude. See that? So, and I said, please, would you be kind enough, all of you to leave for a few seconds? All of them left. I said, can you? I, I need only the mom and the father to stay. They stayed. They left. Now, I have now a mastery after my dealings. I walked straight to the child. There was no prayer. You don't pray for the dead. You raise the dead. <laughs> Praying for the dead does not raise the dead. <laughs> I just went there. Because after my dealings and the fastings and my sanctions and, uh, and the things I saw and what the Lord told me about the realms and dimensions and traveling into the realms of the dead and being able to sort into that dimension and summon the souls of, this, of the dead and bring them into their bodies. So all of this, I knew what was, what was going to happen. So I took the child. And I took the face of, of the child. The child sneaked immediately. Instantly, Pastor Pierre is still alive. The child sneaks. Ah, mommy, mommy. I said, I stood up. I said, give him water and food to eat. While they were trying to rush, I disappeared. Up to date, they didn't know who raised the child. I didn't show myself. I didn't make myself known. Not at all. The child. And when the child came back to life. I wasn't even impressed because I was already dead. The dealings that got me to that dimension killed something in me. So I couldn't even take any glory. There was no, it, it was like, this is what should be. It's norm, it should be norm. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? There was no sense of superiority. There was no sense of, do you know, I just raised the dead. Do you know, I never told any single person what happened myself. Never told anyone. Daddy didn't hear it? Not at all. No. My first time. Nobody. Only Pastor Pierre told people. I never said one word. Now these are the things I received in the secret realms. When I was given the authority, he said, now if you step into this dimension, it must be a place of selflessness. That if you ever cease any portion of the glory, you'll be recalled. What we carry is so dangerous that it, if we share in that glory, you will hear that I slept, I'm dead. You hear that, that I slept and Pastor John is passed. We are easily recalled. Men that carry what we carry don't live long. Yes, we don't live long. We have a very short life. And let me tell you why. Why is because what we carry can be what perverted. So if God sees that you're about to corrupt the glory he takes you straight away. That's what happened to Moses. It, it's, it's there. That's also what happened to Elijah. Elijah lost it. He was in a state of passive anger, depression. He started complaining. God said, You know what? He removed him and replaced him with Elijah. And I know many men of God. His name is Idahosa. Idahosa was removed. He was in that authority. I, I, I know so many men of God across the world that I, I don't want to say now. 
that God, God just removed, they slumped and they died. When you carry power, genuine, when God has entrusted power in your hand, it's not a joke. That's why people who claim to have power don't have power. When you truly carry power, the eyes of the Lord are upon you. You can't live anyhow. Sir, you can't live in, you, your life can never be normal. You don't, because you don't carry a normal gift. For God to wield his glory in a man. A week before I came, I came to South Africa. A week. No, 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 not a week. A day before. Just a day. Uh, my, my grandpapa, my brother in Jobek has asked me to, to come. So they've made the visas. Everything was ready for me to come. A day, I heard of a woman. But she was in coma, not dead. This one is that she was in coma. So the, the, the doctor was coming. So she was, she's been in coma for hours. Gone. So, it's a, it's, she's an elder in her local church and it's a Pentecostal church. So, Enno Jean, some of you will know him, he's, he's a pastor. Enno Jean came and called me and said that this woman has been supporting him in ministry. I heard that she had heart attack and she's in coma. Lost, like completely gone in coma. So, I said, okay, let's go. We went. And he's a very rich, rich woman, very rich. The children are all in the U.S. Medical doctors. Very well, they live in a beautiful apartment, you know, in the highest of the places. So we entered. I saw the pastor. I saw the prayer warriors of the church. They were, the whole place was packed with prayer warriors. And then the room, she was lying there. This way. Well, she was still breathing, but coma. So they were praying that mama shall be praying in tongues. And I knew that. So I, when I came, I sat in the sitting room. What do you call it? Lounge. So the woman was in her room, her, you know, in coma. So they, they were praying, 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 praying. And I was hearing the noise. So I sat down because sometimes if you see me in in my in the in in you don't there is something those that are spiritual can tell when i switch when i switch realms i can be even be anointed now and you're going and anointing and suddenly i switch realms you will see what's going to happen in that moment so when i entered so i, I sat there I, I sat down quietly was waiting for them to pray and finish their things and then suddenly I, 30 minutes went, they were still praying, struggling. 30 minutes praying, oh God, oh God, the answer by fire. You will be in my, for where the woman was still sick, dead, gone. So I was angry. I said, before this woman will pass fully, they are killing this woman the more. Church people, church people. I said, church people who don't understand revelation. I prayed. I, I was just upset and I stood up with anger. I said, Enno, can I please have access to this room? Okay. I said, Yes. I just walked in. This one, uh, I was just angry. Sorry to say that. There was a holy anger in my spirit. Holy anger in my spirit. I just entered there. I said, I said you, you, you. My both pastors, everyone said, Just get that. So I, I, I did it. Oh, I was angry. How can you be calling a, a, a God and the, the, the person is, is still dead? You're making noise. Stop it. Why are you praying in tongues? Mama, 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 you are building up your most holy faith. You're not raising the dead. <laughs> Why are you praying in tongues? You're building up your most holy faith. When you're praying in tongues over a dead, a dead body, you're speaking to God, not to the dead body. He that prays in tongues speaks to God. <laughs> and he builds up his most holy faith. So why are you using the wrong tools? <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's why we must build what we call the university of the seven spirits of God so that the body of Christ can go through transformation. 
you it's like using a, 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 a diesel pouring fuel into a car that has diesel and expect the engine to function to function i was angry i just i just said all of you said get out the rot of an apostle you know you know you don't know, know me you don't know me you don't know me so keep all of you out when i said and they look at my eyes everybody was afraid i'm telling you because when i'm in in that mode you can't touch me all of this things is just to take you sir i could not raise the dead at a certain point in my walk with god until i saw it and i didn't go into questioning god why god is your worried not true i don't believe you know i said lord what happened and by the time i was asking him i was in fasting and prayer fat dry <laughs> Father, your word can be true. Your word is true. But it didn't work. Show me something. Show me, oh God. I starved. No food for one day. Two days. And the Lord came. He said, my son. Seek him with all your heart. And you will find him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. When I drove them all out, I asked the husband to come in. The husband was by my side. The woman was just there, like, like, like lifeless. I went straight to her. I said, what's her name? They asked the told my name. I called her by name. I called her. I didn't blow her up. I didn't know that. Because she was not dead. She was in coma. So I called her by name. If her name was Elizabeth, I said, Elizabeth, return back to your body. Believe me, me. In the name of Jesus. My eyes were right there. Elizabeth, come back to your body. And I said, Elizabeth, she opened her eyes. She, she looked at me. She said, I said, stand. I took her by hand. She stood up. She started walking with me. I opened the door. Everybody saw the woman that they were. I just handed her over. She leave it. You know, that, those days, I, I love to speak uh, uh, King James. <laughs> to feel good I said she leave it because that was what was inside me I said she leave it so I handed her over and at that moment I departed that moment the, 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 the only thing that is boiling in me is to depart from their sight I don't want to be noticed as a powerful man of God I don't want to be worshipped I don't want them to have my number. Guess what? The woman never had my number. I never took one cent from her. I departed. Boom, gone, 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 gone. The next day, I was in the plane to South Africa. That was the end. I don't know her. I don't know about her anymore. And Jean told me that she was perfect. Perfect. When I arrived to South Africa, Grandpapa, Reverend Francis, in Johannesburg, he's alive. The camera covered it. A child who used to have what they call an asthma had an asthmatic attack and passed. Died. She died. This one is death. And I was the guest speaker for Grandpapa when he was opening his church in Johannesburg. Just my few days in Johannesburg. I arrived 1st of February. In Johannesburg had a crusade from the 8, 9, 10. Church was packed. The first day I preached and I spoke on faith. Miracles happened. The second day, I was preaching. I'm preaching. Suddenly, as I heard ambulance, however this woman did it, I can understand. Ambulance, how she convinced an ambulance to bring a dead body into church was a miracle. I heard ambulance. 
I thought it was a joke. I saw a child of almost, probably she was uh, about 10 to 11 years of, of age. They carried her and dropped her in the altar. I was here talking about faith. God can raise the dead. He can change your situation. Hallelujah. I see miracles here. And as I was preaching, suddenly I saw a child being carried. I thought maybe it's just a child that has injury that I can pray for. Until they laid it in the center. The child was gone. So later on, I asked somebody, go find out what happened. So they said, she, she had an asthmatic attack. She, she's been asthmatic. And then she had that attack and died. So the, uh, the paramedic came and checked the pulse. She's gone. So she said, my child can die. I can have a God. My, 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 my papa God. My, you know, my spiritual father, Reverend Francis. And he has an approach. So that's a conference. Please, please, at least give me one minute. Let me bring the child to church before you take the child away. Please. She fought the good father of faith. So they brought the child. The child was lying in my front. Source of God. Honestly speaking, you know, I came newly to South Africa. And South Africa for me looks like uh, London. And I was coming from a country that doesn't look like it. So I loved it. Yeah. Everything about here was good. I loved it. I said, oh God, is it how you want to disgrace me? Just, I, 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 just, I just came in. This is too much. I'm being honest with you. Inside my heart, I was struggling because I liked this place. It was good. I know God has taken me to the next levels. I was happy. So God, amen. I never for I didn't know that the dead body would be in my front. And yet I was talking about raising the dead because I raised just one before I came. So there was that faith. I was saying, and the thing came in my front. I said, oh God. So while I was struggling because I, I love to be honest. That's me for you. I was struggling. I said, oh God, oh God. Oh God, what is this in my heart? So why I was saying it in my heart, I, 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 I was also saying, God can do it. Nothing God cannot do. Hallelujah. I ignored the dead body. I was still preaching. Hallelujah, are you here? Amen. But in my heart, I said, oh, what did this God, God, Lord, if this one doesn't work today, that's the end of, of me. <laughs> oh God, that was the day. I really struggled. That one, I didn't know what happened. I was there solely, it was God himself that did it, not, not, not even me. Because I didn't know, I, I didn't have faith. So, so when the dead body was, was, was there, and I just shook it. So I preached for 20 more minutes. I, I realized that the atmosphere was dry. Because now, people are there, crowd, and the dead body is in your front and you're still preaching. <laughs> what are you preaching? Do, do, just, just show it you don't have to it's, that's why I'm telling you to hold men of God what? responsible if we don't hold them responsible they'll go free they will keep building these five star hotels um, oh sorry five star churches with no power we, we must hold, hold us responsible to be able to deliver what we preach It's time for us, you, men, you congregation, must hold our men of God responsible. You know why? Because if we don't, they will be lazy. But if we do, they will go back into the secret place and grow in spiritual rankings. So I sensed that dullness in the atmosphere. I felt, I felt like the atmosphere has been hijacked. People were like saying, somebody is in your front do something i could see it in their faces so my morale started to drop and drop and drop and then i stopped i remember that moment i this was happening 2009 before i came here in 2010 so before i came to cape town in 2010 so i paused i knew i've lost it in my mental mind so I started to pray in tongues. Shahida made a hoshes. Finiyan hoshesido. Mishapaliva hoshes. That was something came upon me. It's, it's like an unction of the spirit came upon me. I am made to paradise. I said, what? I just stepped down from the pulpit. That pulpit is still there. Same church in Jobek is still there. The guys who saw it are still there. I 
I came down. Do you, do you remember it? Yes, you remember that? Yes. He was there. So I walked down. Child was lying there. I came on that child, put the face on my face. I laid face to face as well. <gasps> Instantly, returned back to the whole church, went on fire. That was the end of the service. Nobody could sit. Sir, the message I would have preached to convince people for 20 days or 20 years took place in one second. By just that manifestation of that miracle, the hearts of men believed. Many started crying. Many lost their sins. Many changed their ways. But fornicators changed. Idolaters changed. Just by observing a dead body coming back to life. Sons of God, this talking is too much. It's time to manifest the glory of our God. Everywhere I went on fire. Lift your hands up. Thou shall operate in power. Oh, that, oh, that amen dream come like a thunder. I said, the hour has come. Thou shall operate in power. Somebody say power. power. Everybody likes a packaged and refined product. But they don't want to know about the raw times. The processes. The crushings. They see the pure oil. The purity of my heart. The glory. But they don't know that this man came as an individual in the hand of the porter. First he broke me, he melted me, he disorganized me, he disoriented me. I was disoriented, completely disoriented. Then he began to remold me, he shaped me, he built me, he patched me, he perfected me. Then he filled me, then he tested me, and then finally he sent me. It's not me that you see here. That's why when men speak of me, I don't stop them. Because men will come to anyone you speak highly of. But when they come to me, who do they see? Jesus. There is something about we. Paul said, don't worry. Imitate me. Just follow me. Because I imitate Christ. He said, take my footsteps. Because my footsteps are Christ's. You can't see me and not see Jesus. Even though you meet me in the realms, I'm taking you straight to Yeshua. We, we, we don't seek worship, but we are representative of our kingdom. When I prayed for that child, he came back to life. The church exploded. Exploded. There was no, I couldn't preach anymore. People were falling. People were screaming. People were crying. People were rejoicing. The, everywhere was, it, the church closed. The service closed. And I handed over the microphone. And I went home. Rejoicing. I said, Father, Father of heaven, thank you. Thank you, Lord. A year later, I was released to come to Cape Town to start my ministry. I didn't know anywhere here. I know nobody. I've never preached in Cape Town and I don't even know my way home. Even where I, I was staying, you know that, um, you know that small hotel that is in Minantin. You know the Formula One in Minantin here? That's where we stayed though. In Minantin, very small hotel. That's where we stayed for almost two weeks. With my wife. She was seven months pregnant. I came here, I didn't know. And we found a hall in Vertical Road here. Just somewhere down here. I didn't know anybody. If I want to go home, I didn't know they were home. I would be, I would be missing home because I didn't know my way. 
and I don't know anybody. I just I was the one who shared the handbills. This thing you you see now big everywhere. I came alone. I didn't know anybody. I was sharing handbills myself, cleaning the church, knocking the. We set up. We had up to five to twenty people who came. Less than five to six. God began to increase us. I, I don't want to tell them about what the miracles, but let me just say something about death. There was a keyboardist. His name is Stephen. He came from Lesotho. He was my keyboardist. He was an orphan who um, severally had drank, drank poison to kill himself several times. So he had this heart condition. I didn't know, but and he, that leads him to heart attack. So one of the service day, we were done with service. He played and went home. But he said he was having issues in his heart. So he had heart attack. And this guy died. Ask him. He died. So they called the ambulance. Before ambulance arrived, I was told that Stephen had passed on. He slumped. Stephen was in church. Played the keyboard and went home after the service and slumped in, in his room and died. So they were now waiting for the ambulance to come and take him to the one, you know, uh, in a mortuary or whatever, do whatever they have to do. When I heard what, I, what has happened, I sent one of the church members to go and bring him to church. So they ran, they drove. His house was about a 10 to 20 minutes drive. So they ran and got him. I was still praying for people because those days, after the services, I pray for people. I don't do it now. So, I was still praying for people. And suddenly, they brought Stephen in. Sons of God, when they dropped Stephen, it was at least <laughs> Dead bodies can be so heavy. They just dropped. It was gone. Stephen was gone. <laughs> oh, this... The cameraman, like him now, couldn't cover it. Came, I asked him after, he said that he didn't know, that he, 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 he was afraid. He said, he dropped, came, everybody was disoriented completely. And how could Stephen just pass? And then, I stood before the dead body. I said, Stephen! with a loud voice he didn't Hi. I walked this way when I was walking you know what was happening in me anger there's a holy anger that came into my space at that point in time you, you know what I was saying do you know who I am it, it, there was no faithlessness or anything like uh, it was, is he gonna no 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 I was like, I called you, Stephen. Are you still there? And I called and said, Stephen, in the name of Jesus, return back to your body. Nothing happened. Uh, you know what I was going to do? I was getting ready to slap this guy eh, with... <laughs> I was going to punch him. I'm, I'm telling you. I've commanded it twice. So the third one, I said, Stephen, he just jumped. He came back to life. <laughs> huh. Now, let me conclude with you know, this. He said, he said, so by the time he came back, he was weak and tired, so they had to take him. He couldn't even stand. So he said to me, after everything, he said, that he was somewhere. He said he had traveled somewhere. He was walking on a lonely road. He said that path there was nobody there. He said, Lord. He said, he said, long road. Very long. He said he was alone. And he was walking. He was walking. He was just going alone. He, then he said, then he heard my voice. He said, he heard my first voice. He said, he, he heard his voice. Stephen, come back. Have you seen the authority? That my voice is not captured in the realm of the dead. It, it traveled there. 
Sa bali na vahila o. So he said, he heard my voice. He said, he heard my voice. But, that he wanted to turn back. But, he continued. Then he said, he heard the second voice. He said, he just, he said, he, he paused. He stood, he stood and, he said, something wanted him to, he, said, he wanted to turn back, but something, it's like he stopped. Then he continued. Then he said, at the third command, he said, the moment he turned back fully, he was in his body. He said, he said the moment he turned, yes. That was, was his testimony. He said, he said that he now turned back. He woke up. Now, fast track. One was in our church. He slumped and died right there was gone slumped it, 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 our, our brother they were around him they were the one actually calling me they were there I, I, I remember you calling me yeah, right this was not a normal fall it, we, we were about to share the grace there was no prayer it was just like we, they stood up and we shared the grace we were about to say immortality Yes, I remember that one lady like said, call the ambulance. Mm, yes. He slumped and died. Bled from both mouth and nose. Bleeding. The heart attack died in church. He slumped. When I touched him, he was gone. Stiff. Right before the church. And I walked straight easily. I walked, I didn't, I didn't even, I just said, I, 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 I prayed. I held him. And then, he came back to me. I don't talk scriptures. I demonstrate scriptures. I've Sir, I do not raise the dead at a certain point in my walk with God until I saw it tangible manifestations of his glory. This is just dead people. We have seen cancer smelt. We've seen uh, 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 stomach shrink. We, we've seen cancers disappear. We've seen we, that, that's, what have we not seen in this place? Special announcement from the office of the bond servant of Christ, John Anosike. Please beware of fake accounts on social media, be it Facebook, YouTube, and all others impersonating the man of God, asking for funds from people. Please note, Pastor John does not have any orphanage in Nigeria or in any country, nor does he ask anyone to donate to any orphanage. Also note that the only official page of the man of God Pastor John Anosike is the one with over 451,000 followers. Our YouTube channel also has over 155,000 subscribers. Note that the man of God does not chat, send friend requests, nor inbox people on social media, be it Messenger or WhatsApp. Therefore, anyone doing such is false and should be treated as such. This is a notice that you are informed and sensitized to be alert and vigilant. Stay connected and keep subscribing to the teaching of the bond servant of Christ, John Anosike. Due to malicious and fraudulent activities, please note that these are the only official two accounts of the ministry. For EFT or bank transfer, bank, First National Bank, FNB, account name, New World Faith Ministries, account number, 622-67035048, branch, Woodstock, branch code, 250 655 Swift Code F I R N Z A J J Building Project Banking Details City of Sons Bank First National Bank FNB Account Name New World Faith Ministries Account Number 623 569 03578 Branch Code 250655 Branch Woodstock Swift code F I R N Z A J J. To give online, kindly visit our website and use the following link 
www.spiritrevelationchurch.org forward slash give here you can give via payfast for those that are in southern africa in paypal for international donations good news for all those living in west africa for your giving and donations here are the only official and approved banking details name ikechuku john anosike account number one one seven zero zero two zero seven five three bank Zenith Bank. Please note that the following is our official and only PayPal email for the ministry. Donations at spiritrevelationchurch.org Kindly report any suspicious activities to our emergency line. Plus 27634235895 Or email 